Hello everyone, welcome to Juliet's Kitchen. I wanted to do a little talk about healthy eating and about where we start. So often people get overwhelmed at the beginning of the journey, they want to change their eating habits, but what do they do? How do they make those first steps? Well, one of the most important things is adding in the good stuff. So what is the good stuff? Well, you can see an array of it in front of me. Whole food, plants and vegetables, fruits and vegetables. This is where it's at for our health and our well-being. This is what we need to get more of in our lives, fresh food, because it's filled with nutrients. So this isn't rocket science, is it? That we, is it that we need this stuff in our lives? But people are so accustomed to just going into the fridge and reaching for a ready meal, sticking it in the microwave or the oven and eating that food. So why is that not good? Well, first of all, that food has been prepared a while ago. So when we cut a vegetable, it starts to lose its nutrients. In fact, when we pick a vegetable, it starts to lose its nutrients. So we have this degradation of nutritional content. Now, don't get me wrong. Sometimes, you know, if we can't do make food, those meals can be a lifesaver. So I'm not knocking that part of it. But where possible, making your own food is really, really important. Another factor in there is if we put stuff in the microwave, this is radiating our food. So this is killing lots of the micronutrients and the nutrients in that food. So we don't want to go there. What we want to focus on is eating as much of this as we can. I went out foraging yesterday and found some amazing mushrooms. Now, these are not mushrooms that you would eat like this. These are mushrooms, medicinal mushrooms. In fact, this is a birch polypore, which grows off the side of a tree like this. So this is something you would make a tea with or a tincture with. It's highly medicinal. Um, so we want to add things like that in where we can. But it doesn't have to be complicated. You know, you can make lovely smoothies and juices just by using simple everyday ingredients like we've got in front of us here. The other thing when we're looking at really swapping over what we're eating is looking at our water. What water are you drinking? This is a really important thing that we're drinking clean, good, filtered water or spring water where possible, not out of plastic. Um, if you can't access a filter in your buying bottled water, make sure it's at least in glass. This is the first step on that journey. But getting a filter is really important because that water is very, very good to cleanse us, to nourish us and to hydrate our cells. Now, if you're eating foods like cucumber, this has got a great water content to it. But what's important is that this is organic. Why? Because of its high water content. If you're putting pesticides and fung fungicides and things like that on something like this, it's all going to be absorbed straight into the, new the moisture the water content of this. So we really want to make sure that we're having organic where possible. Not everything has to be organic. And in fact, that is a good question, isn't it? Why do we need to eat organic in the first place? Well, these foreign things, pesticides and fungicides, are foreign to our bodies. It's not what we're designed to consume. So having them can have a detrimental effect on your health. So we want to scrap that where we can. Now, some things, as I said, have more of an impact than others. So watery things uh, are really important to have as organic. Potatoes, sweet potatoes, your root vegetables, these grow in the ground. What happens to all those things that are sprayed? They go into the ground and get absorbed into the root network, which for a potato, that's what it is, it, that's the root. So these are some of the reasons we want to make sure certain things are organic. There's a great list you can find on the internet um, the clean 15, the dirty dozen. And that's what you want to make sure you look at and you stick to that as a kind of basic principle. Okay, so we know we need to increase our fruit and vegetable in intake. What do we need to decrease? Well, we need to decrease the foods that act as anti-nutrients. So what does that mean, anti-nutrient? It means that when you eat that food, that food is going to go into your body and it's actually going to use your nutrients instead of giving you nutrients really important thing. And yet most of our diets are consumed by anti-nutrients. So how does a food become an anti-nutrient? Well, if that food has been taken from its original form and it's been stripped of its minerals, its nutrients, and processed like refined bread, refined sugar, those kind of things, refined pasta, all of the refined foods in that refining, they're taking out the stuff that your body actually needs for you to digest it. Wow, amazing, isn't it? 
So we need to get back to getting away from the refined, getting into the whole foods as much as we can. Now, we're all on a journey. You may be just at the beginning and that's okay. It's about taking those steps, taking the action, no matter how small, because every little action will take you onto the next action so that then you can really feel empowered in your journey of health and well-being. So don't think you have to run the marathon. It's step by step. I hope I've given you a few little useful points to get you started on this journey. You've been with me, Juliet Bryant. Thanks for coming to my kitchen.